Let's be intentional. This idea is undeniable simple, but at the same time, it is a compelling concept. Being intentional means making calculated, thoughtful, daddy decisions based on something important to you. When we are intentional, our choices help us to have a, a specific focus and to take the right action. We go out of our way to seize every opportunity presented to us as if our lives depend on it. And why do we do that? Well, because it does. Our future relies on our deliberate actions and choices. So welcome to Let's Be Intentional, a space designed for you to help you improve your intentionality. We invite leaders who share their life stories and especially those elements that allow them to succeed and be meaningful day by day. And today, in Let's Be Intentional, we have an extraordinary leader, our guest, Denise Miller. She accompanies us from New York. Denise, welcome to Let's Be Intentional. Thank you. It's so good to be here. I'm glad. It is an honor for us that you generously accepted this invitation and help us to be more intentional today. So my friends, later I will tell you more about Denise's professional career, achievements, and social impact. But before I pass the microphone, I want you to know that Denise is a very inspirational woman who transformed the concept of retirement in her life and decided to follow her call to lead teams and organizations to excellence. Something that catches my attention from Denise is that she is also a poet, loves music, which I love too, <laughs> and for many years was a singer in a choir. So Denise, let's go back to the past. Let's go okay. back to the beginning, let's say, for a Help us to understand, tell us how you begin developing your professional and business ideas and what led you to start this project. Tell us about your why. Meanwhile, I'm going to take notes. I'm going to make sure <laughs> that nothing goes unnoticed. So, go ahead. The microphone is yours. Okay. Well, it's very interesting. Um, as a as a child, I was actually the first grandchild on both sides of my family. And for those of you who know anything about birth order, we're usually very high achievers. Um, but we also have an issue. And that issue is that because we're a little person among adults, uh, we also have some inferior art inferiority issues, not because the adults make us feel inferior, but because we're just little people. We don't know that much. We're smaller. And and so I, I went through both of those things, but I was really bright. I um, loved to read and study, and I went through college uh, through K through 12. And then, and then when I got to college, I, I really loved being creative. I have been sewing uh, since I was 12 years old. Um, that's 60 years, believe it or not. And so I've always had this creative streak. Now, why I was creative back then was because I was fat and they didn't have nice clothes for fat girls. So I had to sew. But it has really formed my career because I've always attempted anything that I tried with a creative spin to it. Sometimes when I was in corporate, that wasn't appreciated. I was hired my first job and I went to this job. I was the only woman of color. I was the only person of color in many of the, the meeting rooms, but I had um, a, a department head who really championed me as a person and put me out there and allowed me to make speeches to speak. Um, it made him look good too, because that was back in 1974. And um, he, he just always really liked me and, you know, for no reason other than he just liked me. And so that's what started my career. My first 22 years out of college, I worked with all men in the industry energy industry. Thankfully, although I'm creative, there's a there's a, a side to me that is also um, 
that engineering kind of thinking. Um, thanks to my dad for that. I know I got that from him. And so I was able to work well. But at one point, I was, believe it or not, ladies, I was tired of being the only woman in the room. Wow. And I'm a person of faith. And, and I felt the Lord ask me, if you didn't have this job anymore, what would you do? And I didn't know what I'd do. But I decided that I wanted to start my own business. And that's when the journey started. Uh, because I'm hard-headed, um, I didn't take advice. So I went through a lot of changes and a lot of difficulties. But at the end of the day, I had the resilience to keep rising. I had a father who felt that I could do anything. And a year after, a year after I left corporate, daddy died. Um, actually, it wasn't even a year. It was about nine months. Daddy died. But I still knew that he felt that I could do it. And one of the reasons that I keep going at it is because daddy said I could do it. Now, my father was by no means a saint. He put my mother through all kinds of difficulty. But um, he always, and, and my mother used to say this to me, she said, I stayed with your father because no matter what happened between us, meaning her and him, she says, I knew he loved you children. There were three mm -hmm. of us. And so um, I've been able to go through a lot of different careers and a lot of different industries. I've always, I used to feel sorry for myself and say, oh, I'm the only one until two young women uh, in the Maxwell organization looked at me one day and said, you know what, stop that. You're not the only one. What you are is unique and you have a unique perspective on life. And once I made that mind shet, mindset shift, it made all the difference. Because now when I look at people, I can tell them about my unique perspective on life. I can also tell them how they can go and do the same thing, whether you're a woman, whether you're a person of color. I have had so many diverse experiences that I feel that I, I should not die and take all of this with me. I need to leave it so that people can profit from it. Um, Miles Monroe, who was a very great preacher, he's been dead now some years. He was killed in a plane crash, actually. But he always used to say that the most expensive piece of real estate on the planet is the graveyard because people die with their gifts and talents still in them. Wow. My goal, my goal is to be empty when God calls me home. I want to leave it all here because taking it with me isn't going to help anybody. Amazing, Denise. It's unbelievable. All these elements that you're sharing with us in your story, which actually is so inspiring. I love a lot that, that you're so aware of your creativity. And that is an element that it's been helping you in your journey. And even some people don't see it, but for you, it was an element of development. And lovely that you, you mentioned to us very important things like you have mentors in lives that help you, um, that you make decisions. And, and you're so aware of that because sometimes people are like, oh my goodness, I don't know what's going on. But they, they didn't realize that they made the decision. They are in the place that they are because it was their decision. Right. And, and, and you're so aware that you make a decision to have that business. So you start developing that resilience. And how beautiful that you have that someone in your life that truly believe in you, your father, right? Because most of the time people have that, right? Like a, they have a business idea or a beautiful idea. And instead of having someone to, you know what? I believe in you. I'm going to support you. I'm going to be with you until you make it happen. The majority of people is like, what? <laughs> no, just don't do it. You know, just forget it. What, what are you talking about? You're crazy. We can see what is your, your because you have a lot of experience in your life. And what is this coming from? Your mindset and all that experience in different companies and organizations. Why you have that unique perspective. I love the statement of that pastor. I love that quote. I love what he said. That is something that is very important for us to keep in mind. We don't want those graveyards that expensive with right. all our 
purpose and resources and all, all the, that is given to us. And if we don't use it, it will be lost for sure. Yes. So as I promised, I'm going to share a little bit more about Denise. She is the owner of BLM Strategies and she specializes in leadership development and in working with teams to ensure that team members are communicating at the optimal level as well as increasing organizational influence and effectiveness throughout customized interactive training to organizations. So Denise is also trained personal image consultant and she was certified. Uh, this is the Association of Image Consultants International. She can work with individual uh, clients on personal visual image as a function of effective communication. And for the last 20 years, she has spoken to audiences about personal image, professional presentation, professional presence, and business and social etiquette. Uh, then it is also an independent Maswell Leadership Certified Trainer, Speaker, Coach, and Maswell Method of this trainer. Denise is very active on social media. And if you want to get in touch with her, you will find her in the social channels, which I will share with you on the comments of this material, as well as her contact information so you can be in contact with Denise. So Denise, let's talk about now this. What is that you're doing today? And also please share with us, what are those elements or tools or the resources that you are using that really maintain you in that level of intentionality? Well, I think, well, I know the biggest tool is, is the Lord. Uh, there is a verse in the book of Proverbs uh, that's, that says, commit your way to the Lord's and he will establish your thoughts. And when you break it down into the translation, uh, it means more than commit. It means roll your works over onto the Lord. And there was a time that I didn't do that, quite honestly. I, I started when I started my first business. When I left corporate, I was like, okay, God, thank you for the idea. You sit there. I'll do this. Like, okay. literally. I, and the Lord was like, okay. Go ahead, you do it. And of course it failed. It was a, it was a horrible mess. Um, I thank goodness for a great accountant who got me out of the horrible mess, but it was a mess. And it, it's then that I began to learn um, about the need to follow the Lord and and to really ask. And, and sometimes I don't ask like I should. I, you know, I'm not a saint, I don't have wings, but uh, I more than often, do ask and I ask the whenever I ask the Lord, He gives me what I need to do what I need to do. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is I take care as well as I can of my health. Um, I'm going to be 72 years old in four months. And everybody's like, oh my goodness, you don't look that old. That is just a blessing. That is good genes. That's, you know, that's God's grace. And I've also come to learn that had I taken better care of myself 30 years ago, I would not have had to have two knees replaced, one hip replaced, a thyroid removed. I've had so many surgeries that it's crazy, but I keep going. And, and that positive mindset and, and gratitude for many years. I haven't done it this year and I'm not really sure why, but for about five years in a row, I got up every morning and I had um, sets of journals by years. And every morning I would write 10 things that I'm grateful for that happened in the last 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And I walk around now just thanking the Lord as I go through the day. But it is so important to realize what you have because we live in a world that's totally negative, that's totally uh, telling us all the, all the horrible things. And we don't really look at what we have. And, and um, you could have a little bit and you could make it go a long way if you would just stop looking at what you don't have Look at what you do have, and then that creativity. Um, one of the things that that I explain to people is the reason that I'm so creative. 
when it comes to problem solving and dealing with teams and individuals is because I sew, because I can look at what you have. I can look at what you have on your body and I know exactly the pieces that it took to make it happen wow. and how it worked out. And that's carried over into how I look at problems and issues. I look at the big picture and then figure out where the pieces are that fit together and where there might be adjustments in those pieces to make changes. And, and so that's one of the things. Um, exercise. Remaining teachable is so important. There's a part of me that would love to go around and say, I've looked at some people. In fact, the two young women that, that spoke to me, I'm old enough to be their mother's big sister, okay? Uh, these women are in their 40s. I'm 30, at least 30 years older than they are. But they said some things to me that I needed to hear. In fact, what made me realize that my expertise in working is in working with teams is another young woman who sat down one day she and I were having a conversation and she asked me well who do you serve and I was all over the place and at the end of the she didn't say anything but when before we hung up she said you need to focus you need to focus on who it is you're serving you're all over the place nobody knows who you work with and she was pretty stern Okay, and I had to make the decision that I was going to accept that as constructive criticism rather than to feel that it was a lack of respect or there was any issue because wow. she was really trying to help me and she wanted me to get it. So she was in my face and she was firm. So you've got to be teachable. An eight-year-old can teach me. An eight-year-old can teach me. If they've got something that I need to know and they say it, I need to listen up and learn because I don't see things from anybody's perspective but my own. And the only way that I'm going to learn is to understand what other people's perspectives are. And so that's really, really important. And one of the the third thing that, that I want to say is you need support. I have support. I have a lot of good support. Um, my two best friends, they both think I'm nuts. They're like, why in the world did you start a business at 67 years old? What were you thinking? However, they're right there in my corner. I will, um, oh my goodness, and I want to cry. One of them in particular, she's dyslexic. And she reviews every single PowerPoint that I do when I'm going to go teach. Because of her dyslexia, she can pick out the things that don't make sense. Exactly. And, and then the other one is a very, very, she was a medical biller. That was her career. So everything is just so. And she can pick out other errors and they do they're there to help me I can call them to listen to something that I want to deliver or I can send them something and they think I'm crazy but they're like girl when you become Oprah we're going to be your gal that's what they tell me all the time and and they support me um my siblings are have all passed on um so these two girls are are my family and these two women, because we've been friends, the three of us have been friends for well over 30 years. Wow. So. This is so inspiring, Denise. Thank you very much. I mean, you just shared with us gold here. Mm -hmm. And I really hope, my friends, that you are taking notes. I'm, I'm trying to, but for sure I'm going to listen again many <laughs> times this material because there are, over here we have so important points that definitely will help us to become a very intentional and everything that we need to do. I, and, and I have to start with the one, that commitment with your spiritual life and your connection with God. That is powerful. That is your your foundation, which is so yes. beautiful that you share with us. Also, how intentional you are taking care of yourself, of course, with that amount of experience that you have with all those surgeries <laughs> that happened to you. It's beautiful. It's beautiful that you are so intentional in something that definitely all of us have to, regardless of that we are in the 50s and the 40s and the 60s, 
it doesn't matter. We have to take care of us in in days, even even in the twenties. If yes. we know that we have a lot of audience that they are millennials right now, and even if you are in the twenties, you are putting the foundation for your body and the fifties. Yes. So so let's do it. One of the things that we really need to take notes here is how intentional you are with the journaling. I love that. I love that idea. It's not only to be optimistic and, and be thankful and grateful every day, but also go to the extent to write it down. The 10 yes. things that you are grateful for probably the day before or the week before or this month, but go ahead and write it down because this is all I, I truly believe and I totally agree with you, Denise, that being grateful and being thankful it really, really put us in a position to have a different perspective of what yes. is life, because this is one of the things that, that you are giving us today. Realize what you have. I love that statement. You can see that you have that heart of a mentor and heart of a coach, because you can mm. see it. You can see other people and you can see probably what they don't see. And because you have spent all that time in your life sewing and putting together those pieces, you even extrapolate that to your training, to your coaching, to your mentoring. Yes. It's kind of like a profound moment. I mean, it's a wow moment for me. That's true. We have, we sometimes have so many little pieces. Yeah. But we need that someone to help us to put it together and especially in a team and organizational environments. Yes. I truly understand what you mean that working with a team, they are like those little pieces and you have that ability and capability to put together their strengths. Yes. And put on perspective their weaknesses so they can have a better outcomes. Yes. Beautiful. I love be teachable. Oh my yeah. goodness. I love that one. That is something that I that I have it on my notes, that I put it on my desk, that I put it on my nice stand, that I put it here and there. Be teachable. The day that we feel like we know it all, that's the day that the beginning of the end. Absolutely. It's it's beautiful that be teachable and, and allow people to, to teach us in different ways because yes, time is different. For, uh, for, for for all of us, and you are closing, sharing with us support, the value of the inner circle to be surrounded with the people that we would like to become. We are the product of our inner circle, so we have to be Absolutely. so careful. Who are we accepting in our inner circle? You have that blessing that yes. in the inner circle you have family, those friends that they are so talented. Yes. And you are putting the talents on your servers, which is the service for others. Yes. They are, they are living legacy with you. How powerful it is to be surrounded by, by the correct people. Not only that support us, but we have the opportunity to support yes. them, to give something to them yes. valuable that they can take them to the next step. Wow, this is beautiful, Denise. Is there something else mm-hmm. that you feel like okay, now that I'm recapping? <laughs> I didn't leave anything out. I just want yes. to mention to you that in, in our audience, we have a lot of people that they are transitioning from economic levels of life. Some of them are employees creating a career or something, and they are transitioning into become solopreneurs or startups. It's a lot okay. of people in transition. And in, in our economy nowadays, it probably it will be more. People yes. are transitioning. What do you think about being intentional when we transition? Because I just I just see my friends, Denise, have a lot of experience on transition. The first thing is, is to recognize that you have very specific gifts and talents, and you don't even realize that you have them because you just do that. My mama used to tap me on the leg. I will never forget. I would be with my mama. And I would say something or be very upset and, and, and say, well, I don't understand why they, they didn't see that. And she would tap me and she'd say, baby doll, you're not normal. And I will say the same thing to each of you. You're not normal. There are things that you see that nobody else sees. There are ways that you look at things that nobody else looks at them. And that is your gift. That is your gift. Use that gift and understand that We have gifts and talents and abilities and skills that are transferable. 
better transferable. I have been through four different careers and about, well, I've been through four different careers and four different industries and that I've had a little bit of things on the side. But the one thing that I have is the ability to communicate. In fact, one of my niece says to me, she says, Auntie, you have a lot of words, but I have the ability to communicate and that transfers. You know, whether I'm a personal shopper at Nordstrom, which I was, okay, whether I self-service for Mercedes-Benz, which I did, all right, whether I'm working in a gas utility, whether I'm teaching in a university, which I did for 18 years, or whether now I have my own business, it's my ability to use words. You've got that same ability, whether it's the ability to bake a cake, whether it's the ability to do uh, carpentry or plumbing or flower arranging or craft work, you've got an ability. Um, I'll quote T.D. Jakes. He said many, many years ago, whatever it is, girl, work it. Work it, work it, work it. Whatever that is, don't look, don't despise the day of small beginnings. Okay, don't look down on what you think is little. You, that's a big deal. God gave you that gift. This is lovely for the people that is in transition. Understand your talents. Yes. can use them in one of the big talents that you probably don't realize you have is your words. Use yes. them. And I yes. totally agree with you. Don't worry about new beginnings. Right. Uh, actually, in fact, we're supposed to have every day a new beginning. Absolutely. So this has been amazing, Dennis. Thank you very much. It's been a fantastic interview. Uh -huh. We thank you a lot, again, for your generosity, contribution to Let's Be Intentional. And we hope that you can join us uh, in the near future in another session. So, well, my friends, if you have discovered that any of these amazing elements that Denise shared with us today, any idea, any point of what she mentioned with us resonate with you, well, you can start today to increase your intentionality and yes. become the person that you're supposed to be or reach that goal that you have in your heart and you really want to accomplish that. So we will be inviting you to our upcoming sessions of Let's Be Intentional very soon. So please stay tuned for further updates. Love to see you being intentional. See you soon. Oh, 